that it's a uh, uh, time to start the opening event. And uh, uh, firstly, uh, I really appreciate all of you to come here for the opening, the exhibition, Nation of Sorrow, I mean. And then, uh, <coughs> uh, this is uh, one of my outcome uh, of the uh, sabbatical uh, last year, <laughs> that I have stayed here uh, for my academic research uh, almost one year a little bit. <laughs> and then the, this is uh, uh, one part of the outcome, that one. <laughs> and then the main topic I wanted <laughs> to focus was uh, uh, the mechanism of national romanticism from Finland as a multi-spring way. Because <laughs> uh, uh, it's a global age, but uh, the, nowadays uh, everybody says <laughs> that uh, diversity or sustainability or resilience, such kind of things is uh, quite important. But uh, I don't believe the uh, way of that one can be the international standardized. It should be the difference depending on the context on that uh, land or country or folklore and so much. But even if it is so, I believe to uh, find the common theory or the methodology how to realize our rich for uh, society or something. And then I want to find some kind of hint, hint from the uh, mechanism of the national romanticism way. <laughs> and then, uh, slightly by slightly, I'd like to get into this about the context of the exhibition it's separated. But anyway, <laughs> firstly, I'd like to uh, introduce the Professor Penti Kareoya. And, uh, he was a uh, uh, supervisor uh, while my sabbatical. So please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is really my great pleasure, um, ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Murata, welcome. We are very pleased to have you here as well. And we have also special guests from Bauhaus University, Weimar, directly from the airport. So it's a highly international event. But anyways, um, it's really great pleasure, not only to open this exhibition, but also to have got meet Taishi during the sabbatical. And I already, for now know that we are going to be friends forever <laughs> and and the supervisor term is like slightly interesting because i think the roles in the end went opposite <laughs> down I, I felt sometimes that I'm, I'm really learning and got lots of interaction by talking with you and uh, on behalf of alto we also really warmly welcomed uh, a new type of research uh, methodology, which I think you followed logically from the scratch to this kind of, uh, this is just one visual part of, of your studies, which means that uh, some kind of combination of academic research combined with the hands-on type of uh, experimental research, research and testing things. And uh, luckily enough, um, the workshops were at that time open and, and uh, active. It was already before Corona time, luckily, so the interaction was quite vivid. But anyways, uh, I'd say that this is exactly what we would like to support and also continue at Alta University to have these kind of interesting uh, interactions and visits um, from all over the world and, and similarly, this kind of um, Japanese, uh, Finnish cultural bridge, which has been built during the years. Uh, at the moment, or in Japan actually, those who don't know, uh, already was another exhibition by Taishi, and it was supported by the Finnish Cultural Institute and uh, Embassy in Finland, as it is now. And so. Perhaps with these words, I'd like to also introduce Uryo Sotama, who has been in an important role in establishing the lively community between Japan and Finland and Finnish Cultural Institute. Maybe you can say a few words after that. That would be interesting to hear a bit more. But anyways, uh, I suggest that you really uh, study Taishi's exhibition I think this kind of a common uh, 
field which can be found on each of these three nations basically can show us that it's not just the location but there is a certain kind of mental uh, let's say location as well or attitude and I think uh, all of us are sharing this same I, you have introduced it, uh, nation of sorrow which <laughs> there is a certain melancholy perhaps at least here <laughs> and according you also in Japan and I guess perhaps even in, in Germany but uh, also I can say a few words that the exhibition is traveling exhibition which has been customized uh, to all the sites waiting and it's going to go to Germany next year both to Berlin and to Weimar and that's great absolutely so once again warmly welcome and uh, it's a gr great pleasure to have you here and your exhibition here as well thanks Natasha thank you so much So actually, that I have to moderate by myself everything today because <laughs> I'm a foreigner here still. <laughs> but I want to be the one kind of the translator to uh, find the uh, common um, similarity yeah, between the Finland and Japan, and of course with Germany too. <laughs> and then, uh, secondly, that I want to also the introduce the uh, Japanese embassy, Mr. Murata. あの、もう本当に。あ、どうも。あの、今日はパイロット。皆おれの高島が、ダパニンスーラヘピアス。だけでエンドマイ。エニュエア、サンキューレナショカリンプレイ。アンデン、アンミスターワタナベ、アヒ
and then we are connected each other directly by the Finnair and Japan Airlines, usually seven times a week, but now only three times, three times a week, and then it's very difficult to uh, go and see each other. But uh, I hope it will uh, uh, go back to normal in the near, near future. And then uh, I hope that his uh, work will, uh, uh, you know, will be successful in the future. And then, uh, I hope uh, we can have a good relationship with each other. Anyway, thank you very much. So please enjoy the, your stay in the Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Ambassador Japan Dancer, Mr. Murata. So actually, uh, I have not so much planned everything, but uh, uh, maybe the, uh, I think it's better to uh, explain the uh, abstract you know, the, this exhibition a little bit, I guess. But, uh, uh, first of all, all the, I am pleased to tell you that uh, I had an uh, exhibition in Tokyo uh, last week at the uh, Finnish Embassy in Japan, Metta Pavilion. And then as a uh, uh, Penki told that, uh, as Penki told that, the, uh, actually the uh, three exhibitions I planned while my sabbatical all have to be postponed, unfortunately. That's why the, uh, the exhibition in Tokyo was a plan to summarize exhibition at the first, but uh, instead of that one, just have to be departure exhibition <laughs> now. And then uh, uh, from today, the, I'm very glad to have the exhibition in Helsinki first, and then uh, uh, I'm also very happy uh, to maybe realize that the other two exhibitions in Germany uh, from uh, next uh, June. <coughs> And then uh, mm, I really uh, surprised and then uh, appreciate uh, Professor Berena and then the, uh, Anna and the, uh, the, uh, these three uh, people are coming from Germany today for maybe only for this occasion. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I think that I'm very uh, mm, how to say. Uh, uh, lucky person that who is supported that so many people that in Finland, Japan, and Germany. Uh, firstly, that I want to uh, say thank you so much about this. And then, uh, slightly, the first I try to the explain about the uh, exhibition in Tokyo before explaining about the exhibition in here. <laughs> The, uh, I named the uh, exhibition in, in Tokyo the, as a Unity Architecture in Finland and Japan. And then this is a, a summarizing exhibition to connect three different exhibitions in different countries. But at that moment, I try to make a one principle uh, to find the uh, common design and then, or architecture design and the which cannot uh, compose or the design by using specialized architectural uh, design languages or the technologies. So this is uh, only the one uh, principle or uh, methodology I found from the mechanism of the national romanticism. But I think still it's important for Japanese too. Because for Japanese people, uh, we don't have the uh, concept of the architecture or uh, architect until uh, 150 years before, because such kind of the concept was imported from Europe or USA mainly. That's why the, instead of that one, we uh, have the uh, carpenter culture, not as an uh, architect's culture. So uh, even if it is so, of course, uh, there are architects uh, in uh, pre-modern age in Japan too, of course, but uh, the, we actually uh, didn't have the conception of the architect designers or in uh, because uh, uh, all of them are interpreted as like uh, architecture. So uh, that's why to make uh, architecture, the, uh, we have to combine the so many technologies or craftsmen from other fields. And then the, I try to make the, find, I try to find the sympathy 
with uh, such kind of the culture with the uh, uh, Finnish way, especially in the age of national romanticism, uh, almost 104 years ago, mm -hmm. when uh, Finland uh, was independent. <coughs> and then uh, the name of so I guess that everybody is uh, wondering how, why I named so. <laughs> That's why I want to emphasize. Uh, about the meaning of the uh, soul itself. I never say uh, this is just a sadness, <laughs> that uh, it's included in loving somebody or something. <laughs> but uh, for example, the when I say I miss you, <laughs> that if I cannot see you again, <laughs> we say, everybody says we miss you, because we love you. <laughs> so that I agree <laughs> that sadness and then love cannot be separated. <laughs> And then that's why the, uh, I think the, uh, this can be the one of the names to call the third place uh, uh, with the context uh, of the country or folklore or um, some kind of nation uh, which was uh, uh, happened by the external uh, pressures, politically, economically, uh, military, or something. The, uh, at least we, Japan, was defeated by USA at the age of World War II. And then the, I think uh, the Finland is also the, had a, such a kind of very um, tough age, uh, especially uh, before and after the World War II, that through the continuous war, or Cold War, and so on. And then, but uh, uh, that because of that one, and, uh, I think the Finnish people could find the way uh, how to uh, translate the attitude to accept eternal power as their own expression. This is a, a mechanism I found <coughs> through the uh, national romantic age in Finland. The, of course, the all Finnish people already know the uh, very famous uh, painter Axel Gangnam Kandela. And then actually, the, uh, when I came to here uh, two years before already, <laughs> and, uh, one my uh, respect designer from Japan, the Mr. Uh, Exro Endo, took me to this uh, Aksen Gallen Kandela Museum. And then uh, he explained me and then guided me how important he is for such kind of the age. And then at that moment, I really uh, in, in just in the, this painting by uh, Axel Gandel Kandela, uh, especially. The, uh, he is uh, Axel Gandel Kandela himself. And then the, he is Jean Chibels, and then he is Robert Kainz. And then, uh, I'm sorry for uh, Finnish people, this is quite famous. <coughs> so I have to learn more uh, from you, but uh, uh, maybe it's better to explain why he is no architect here. <coughs> I think in my uh, hypothesis, the Axel Gandel Kandela is the one of the most important key person to create the conception of the national romanticism itself. And then at that moment, he uh, have to lead so many um, field creator or the designer that he is painter, sculpture designer, or stained glass designers, and so on. It's uh, still uh, continued in the innovative way through the uh, design education in art too, <coughs> uh, like uh, uh, Yosotama uh, called Innovative uh, University. <coughs> and then uh, I want to uh, consider why here is no architect. Because uh, uh, mm, <coughs> in the age of the independence of the Finland, I think that uh, there is so much thing they have to do before building the architecture. Of course, they have to prepare the uh, name of the nation, and then constitution, and then uh, <coughs> uh, national flags, or the costume, or the military, or so many things they have to the design. <coughs> and then at that moment, I think it's quite very rich age for the designers or the architects to consider uh, that something uh, which can be contributed to the society uh, more than a, a contemporary age. So that I like to the capture the, uh, what kind of things uh, activated their creations. And then uh, step by step, 
uh, I tried to uh, seat by myself to correct the uh, design the, uh, made by except for architect. <laughs> and then uh, uh, this is a uh, by using my uh, sketch to correct such kind of the creation from the local area in Finland, uh, uh, including East Karelia uh, regions. And then uh, it's uh, my uh, way to trace the same attitude when Elias Lonliot that uh, try to find the uh, uh, local uh, mythology or uh, some kind of the narrative story from uh, every local area to combine them as Kalevala. <laughs> and then uh, I try to uh, um, trace uh, such kind of the attitude for the design something. <laughs> Yeah, we also, Japan also have the one kind of uh, uh, mythology, national mythology that we call Kojiki, the feature was uh, uh, made maybe in 8th century, uh, I guess. <coughs> and then that's why uh, we still needed the some kind of mythology to share the conception of the country, uh, to let the uh, human beings to live together. And then I think this is the most important point the, what the design or the architecture have to contribute on. <laughs> and then, uh, through learning from this kind of things from Finland, I'm sorry this is already the second line, <laughs> and uh, I try to uh, find that we still have the, such kind of the samples, trials, uh, through our tradition. <laughs> now, as I told you at the beginning, uh, uh, we didn't have the uh, specialized uh, conception as architecture or architectural design. That's why the, the other craftsmen or the sometimes citizens themselves uh, could make the architecture, not by experts. The, for example, the, this is a uh, Udun uh, festival float that made by citizens in uh, Fukuoka prefecture we still uh, continued. Uh, that they are not craftsmen. <laughs> and then to uh, make this kind of the uh, wooden tower, it's approximately 30 meters high, I guess, almost. But uh, uh, they never use the uh, steel nail or something. That they use only the, this rope. Uh, because uh, uh, all of the joints have to be designed to let the ordinary people can make this kind of uh, high wooden tower and then it's mobile one. So uh, I think it's already more expert than uh, architect design or the, uh, some uh, specialist design. And then this is uh, uh, one example that uh, I thought we can, I can find uh, from the tradition of uh, Japanese architecture. This is the oldest one. This is the Horyuji Temple. This is the uh, oldest wooden temple in Japan, which was built in 6th century. And then uh, this is the uh, hidden steel nail, uh, which was used to, comp uh, to build the, this wooden high tower. But at that moment, the, we didn't have the, any uh, conception of the architecture or the specialized architectural uh, craftsman because uh, uh, we don't have the culture of architecture yet. So that's why that this kind of the technology, everything have to be imported, uh, maybe through Korea or from China, finally. But uh, uh, on the other hand, there may be somebody who designed this uh, wooden tower, ask to the uh, craftsman, except for architecture field to make this kind of steel also. The, this is my hypothesis. <laughs> uh, one of the first man is the first man to design the musical instrument <laughs> for rituals. And then there, I, I'm sure that there is also the uh, first man to make the uh, weapons by using steel and so much. But uh, anyway, that we are sure 
that we don't have the specialized craftsmen to do such kind of steel nails. They never uh, need to know the conception of the what steel nail is itself, because we still don't didn't have the culture of the architecture. So that's why this kind of the uh, um, production system is also quite uh, interesting for me. And then uh, I thought uh, uh, we can find the similarity uh, in the theoretically, practically, uh, and then emotionally too. <coughs> so uh, I also uh, uh, picked up the, uh, the other uh, things uh, I try to find through other materials. The uh, first is the uh, rope, next is the uh, steel or metal, including the glass. And then next, on the third line, uh, there is also an example by using the Japanese, um, how do you say English? Japanese washi. <laughs> do you know washi? Japanese the traditional paper. <laughs> and then uh, uh, in the center, I exhibited also the uh, one of the dream uh, drawn by the uh, first designer to create the field of industrial design itself in Japan, Mr. Kenji Ekua. He is quite familiar with uh, Professor Yuro Sotama too. <laughs> and then uh, as the last part, I also uh, introduced the uh, ceramic tapestry way or the uh, some kind of the brick made by Hiroshima clay, which was uh, burned by atomic bomb in the age of World War II. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I think it's already the standardized as a global way or global standard, especially in the field of architecture, uh, to make an architecture by using the uh, experts, craftsmen, and then the uh, specialized technology. Uh, with the connecting with the most advanced uh, uh, computer. But on the other hand, architecture is uh, uh, one of the oldest uh, um, civilization uh, for the human beings history because we still use concrete so much that uh, it was already uh, discovered 2000 years before. <laughs> so that I'm not sure that uh, architecture can be the most advanced civilization in contemporary age. But if it is so, that we still uh, believe that how much architecture can uh, enrich our society for all of the creators, including uh, ordinary people. And then uh, that's why I think there is no architect painted here. And then uh, I also think this is a multi discipline way because uh, there is no borders uh, in between the, uh, each field of music, architecture, sculpture, painting, and so on. So that we are not so much free the how to call the any of these kind of the objections without using the name of the function or the name of the field. But the, in the age of the uh, national romanticism from Finland almost 100 years ago, they had such kind of a sense. So I wanted to try <coughs> to um, translate their methodology or the theory and then how to uh, produce in contemporary age. <coughs> this is my aim to, uh, uh, this is my aim why I wanted to have this kind of exhibition, especially here uh, within a facility designed by Arthur Arthur. <coughs> The, uh, I think that he is a uh, uh, secondary generation as a, a Finnish national architect uh, from Eliel Kainen. But uh, before the Eliel Kainen, the, I learned the uh, Axel Ganden Kallela works here. Uh, I heard that he was uh, one of the clients of Eliel Kainen too. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure this is the most suitable name, <laughs> still very honestly said. But uh, I'd like to uh, find a way to adapt this kind of the conception to the third place uh, without using their own um, unique historical name or something to make the uh, next stage as a new design of the uh, architectural style or design style. 
And then um, at that moment in my uh, interpretation, the uh, mechanism of uh, sorry mechanism of uh, national romanticism can be called as uh, receptive activism. So the, uh, it looks like uh, tomoe nage in Japanese judo. <laughs> the, in Japanese judo, there is the one uh, skill to accept external uh, power from uh, opponents. <laughs> Uh, to throw away uh, he or herself. Uh, we call this way tomoe nage. <laughs> so that it's a quite similarity how to accept the external uh, power like uh, COVID-19 and then uh, how to uh, translate uh, that attitude itself uh, will make next stage of the design. <laughs> Now we uh, already did uh, with uh, using a hybrid system remotely and then physically. Mm -hmm. the unfortunately, actually, that this exhibition in Tokyo uh, cannot be uh, held physically completely. But uh, even if it is so, I exhibit everything like physically. <laughs> and then uh, what I can do is just to broadcast the uh, scenery of the uh, venue and then exhibit with uh, I and uh, Ms. Anna Maria, who is the head of the Finnish Institute in Japan, explain. But even if it is so, instead of uh, having the physical exhibition like uh, before uh, COVID-19 age, <laughs> the, uh, I could have uh, enough opportunity uh, to uh, ask the, all of the people from the world to see my exhibition and then my thinkings. So that it's already uh, receptive activities for me, like a national romantic way. <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway, uh, I really thank you to come here and then uh, listen my thinkings, even if you cannot understand so much. <laughs> but uh, Slightly by slightly, I try to uh, tell you uh, from now. And then uh, it's quite happy if uh, we can progress in some kind of the opportunities through the designs uh, to make one unique Unity architecture as a whole earth itself. <laughs> that it's very uh, happy for me. And then I want to make my own lifestyle I'm not sure I can live more 40 years or I hope, <laughs> or five, 50 years, I hope. <laughs> but that I want to do <laughs> through uh, my life. I promise you today. Thank you so much. So finally, at the uh, last part of the, this opening event today, I kind of introduce Professor Yuga Sotama again. Thank you for uh, that very thorough presentation of your work. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, Professor Watanabe, uh, Taishi Watanabe, Karelia, uh, Enrica, and all friends. Uh, I had uh, the opportunity to learn about Japan to Kenji Ekwan, who is now looking at us from uh, another world. Uh, Finnish design culture is very pragmatic. And my explanation for that is that uh, we have been lucky or forced to live in the very harsh conditions. Uh, Half of the people who live beyond the 60th latitude are Finns. So the conditions are not uh, always nice and, and warm and, and pleasant. And you had to use your design skills and also the skills of architects or building something to survive here. And that led to 
to a, a focus that was very functionalistic. And what I have learned from uh, my friends in Japan is that there's another way of looking at the world. And I always remember the, the discussion with uh, Kenji Ekwan, uh, whom I met in, in first time in, in uh, mid-90s. And I was uh, looking at uh, Shinkansen train that he has designed. And, and, uh, I wanted to congratulate him for this magnificent achievement. And he said to me that, no, no, Ilya, it's, it's not, I have not designed transportation. I have uh, designed tools for communication. And uh, what I have learned from the Japanese colleagues like Taishi and, and Kenzie and many others is that the material world has another side that is maybe even more important than the functional side. Uh, we were talking once uh, with, uh, with Kenzie Ekwan in his house in, in a small uh, tea house he had built to it about the meaning of, uh, of the tea ceremony. And he explained to me that uh, the reason for designing the, the ceremony and the utensils uh, was that there were tools for communication. When foreigners came to Japan and neither one all the people could speak the same language, so we had to have something to communicate with each other. And the tea ceremony and the utensils were designed to help in communicating with other people. And, and this in, has introduced me the, the philosophical side of the material world, that is maybe when you stand in this building, uh, the aesthetics of the building has an impact on your well-being and your feelings and, and, and uh, your relationship with other people. Uh, it has, the environment has a very important uh, philosophical and, and uh, and emotional side. And then uh, one could ask what uh, brings Japan and Finland together if, if the way of looking at the world is so different. Uh, I think what I have learned, I have learned to see what I have not seen. But uh, I think what brings us together is uh, something that Kenzi Ekwan said to the students he was uh, talking to in Shanghai. He was then sitting in a wheelchair with his uh, green cane. He was not uh, walking anymore uh, too well. And he had a long lecture. He was talking over his work to the Chinese students. And then uh, on the end of the the lecture, the students asked him, uh, Mr. Ekman, what have you tried to achieve in the world? And he was quiet for a while, and then he smiled and said that, uh, I'm trying to add beauty to the world. And I think there, Finns and, and Japanese see the world the same way. We appreciate. Uh, highly the, the aesthetic qualities of our environment, so does the, the Japanese. And, and I think this is the bridge between our nations. We see the, the world in this respect the same way, even if the 
the other one is very pragmatic and the other one is, is more philosophical. But uh, I have been very happy to, to learn to know Taishi Watanabe and, and uh, uh, during his uh, stay in Finland and, and learn about his studies. He has traveled around Finland made tons of drawings. He's a very skillful drawer and he has been drawing not only Rautatieasema uh, but a lot of other things in Finland uh, documenting and, 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 and uh, study what he has been seeing. But he's very, he's enormously productive. He's very well organized. I'm uh, amazed how much you have produced from your being in Finland. Uh, now exhibitions in Weimar and, and, uh, and uh, Berlin, this in Helsinki, uh, publications, projects with uh, Finnish colleagues that uh, is presenting here. Uh, and I think this is an excellent example of what uh, dialogue and collaboration between two countries and, and uh, professionals is at its best. I'm very happy that you came to Finland. Happy that uh, I had the opportunity to learn to know you. And, and very happy that you have made me see something that I have not seen. So, cheers to Taishi. Thank you so much. I have to moderate again. <laughs> <laughs> As the first uh, last part of today, uh, I'm pleased to tell you that I it was quite honored I am awarded from the uh, JFDA Association, <laughs> it's a, a Japan Finland Design Association, and then uh, in addition to the uh, Professor Uryo Sotama, the, uh, here is also the. Uh, uh, board member of the JFDA in Finnish side, I kindly introduce them. This was a totally <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, please come here. Of course, maybe all Finnish people already know her so much better, and I really kind of uh, introduce her again, and then Nick, and then, uh, it's <laughs> he, he is very shy. <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Ezro uh, Enzo, <laughs> but, uh, I'm very proud to accept this award and then uh, I really appreciate uh, to support me by this kind of the things uh, for the future collaboration, Thank you. especially. You're very, yeah. very welcome. Hello, I really don't know if everyone does know me. My name is Henrika Saarila, Henrika Saarila, for most of us, yes, for most of us. But, and I am the current chair of Japan Finland Design Association, or JAFDA Finland edition. So these are two sister organizations. We have JAFDA Finland and we have JAFDA Japan. And my colleague, uh, chair of JFDA Japan, is uh, Professor Makoto Shinozaki, uh, well in his 80s and a very Venerable Professor Emeritus of uh, Musashino University. And here co-chairing this year, we've only had these roles since Corona summer 2020, is Etsuno Endo, who um, is a graphic artist, um, long distance living in Finland. So we, we are here today to represent Japan Finland Design Association Finland, and, and Uwe Sotama is back on the board, and he's actually one of the founders, or the founder of Vivek One. So we are in our part really happy to be continuing this tradition. And um, 
we are watching, this is a new initiative, the Pride Initiative is a new initiative, and um, things sort of came together wonderfully in that um, the concept, which is that we Finns um, recognize a Japanese um, young or the current architect or designer who is significantly adding to the dialogue between the two countries. And then vice versa, in 2022, it will be our Japanese colleagues who have the task of finding a fin that they, they think is doing the same. So that is, that's the concept of this prize, which was handed to you like just about a week ago, late September, um, from the two, two associates said two associations together so congratulations again it's actually the first time i physically see it signed so i'm quite oh, chuffed good. <laughs> yes um would you like to yeah, you're gonna my name is Victor and i'll be uh just to uh, introduce us i'm the uh, uh vice uh chair of the uh jfd uh, finland and also actually i'm vice one of which uh, board members of the um, JFT Japan as well, because yeah, yes, one Japanese well. should be in the board. So, mm -hmm. and the the idea is just to um, the uh, associations are already twenty years old, uh, but now and the last year or this year they celebrated the, the twentieth anniversary, and for the new future, uh, the this what the award is one of the uh, kick towards the future, and the uh, the members are hoping to do something new and the. Um, Sustain, sustainable and the long-lasting and the relationship between Japan and Finland in design and architecture field. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming today. And then, uh, actually, I want to introduce everybody today, <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I think it's not so much enough time. That's why uh, please uh, allow me to introduce more three uh, my friends. <laughs> Now I'm the uh, Verena from the uh, Weimar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Taishi. I'm I'm absolutely not prepared. I'm <laughs> almost uh, on a private trip. Uh, Thank you so much. Um, I'm very much looking forward to your exhibition in Weimar. So as Taishi already said. Um, this exhibition is traveling, but it's also changing its title and its focus, as far as I've understood. And we are very happy to host the exhibition at Bauhaus University in Weimar in uh, June, most probably in June 2022. And we are planning to have the exhibition in the Bauhaus Atelier, which is a, um, a former, what is it? Sculpture. Yeah, it's got a former sculptures atelier studio, but before the time of the Bauhaus. So because it was an art school before, and it's a very really beautiful building, and now it um, it hosts a cafe run by students, and we will have the exhibition together with the cafe in this beautiful pavilion-like building in the in the heart of the campus. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I also would like to introduce Hannah Schlesser, my colleague. We came together and we are working at the same chair. It's the chair for design and housing at Bauhaus University of Weimar. And I might also <laughs> tell you a little bit about how we met. So my university has a long-standing partnership with Waseda University. And we, the two of us, inherited the partnership from our, from other professors. So uh, we really, we met and we had an excursion to Japan in 2017 and we found our work interesting. We, after our excursion with 16 students, we did some research on two houses in Tokyo. It was built by former Bauhaus students, so Japanese, architects who went to Denzel to study at the Bauhaus and then came back and built houses, one for himself and the other one for an artist. And we did a film uh, on this 
on these two houses, and we also did some interviews, and of course we need a good title as well. And I have the publication here, and if anyone is interested, I can also present it later or show it to you. I might give one to you if you're interested. So we started a cooperation that might develop. In some ways, we don't know yet. And we both traveled several times between Europe and Japan, and I'm very really happy to be here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry to ask you, pardon me, but I'm also a visitor, but very, very welcome to Finland. <laughs> and then uh, next time I want to introduce the one of the most gentle Finnish designer, Mr. Espesma. Um, this was unexpected. I'm very glad to be here and uh, see all the friends who have come together to the exhibition. I'm very happy to see all these products. And uh, what connects us, uh, it was actually from Petri Karioja. We met here in our university where I'm teaching. And we came together with Tai Chi and started to talk about many philosophical issues concerning design. And then we happened to start to do some design together. So that we have a few examples here in the exhibition too. Um, I have to say you one thing which takes me back to Japan many years ago when actually in old uh, school of mine. I was doing work with Yuri uh, Henno and Yuri Sotoma for one big exhibition but we turned here in Europe and at the end I remember that I took this exhibition by myself to Japan and that time Yuri Sotoma helped me to go to Urasenke tea school and still I can remember that very well. It was a touching moment. So I have to thank you very about it. It still uh, reminds me of the beauty of what you were talking about in Japan and Japanese design and architecture. And it was interesting to hear that it was about the communication. And I had a tea ceremony with the master Urasenke school. Later on, I understood that he's probably the highest master in the whole Japan. And what he explained to me, I can tell you privately, but he was a really funny guy. <laughs> and we had a good laughs there too. So now it's very nice to be back in the Japan circle. Thank you, Taishi, for giving this opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Actually, uh, now uh, we cooperated to design the one uh, sofa being named uh, Pelti. This is a model of that one. And then the, uh, several days before, the, we also the, uh, went to the one furniture factory. And then I'm happy to realize this project. And then the, uh, he also has just uh, exported his design, the 60 light. Right, right, to Japan. So uh, I also try to make uh, such kind of a platform to uh, cross over the products or the project or the designs. And then uh, I also show that is an uh, example in this line. And then uh, I, of course, I am a professional architect, but uh, uh, in addition to that, I'm also the teaching at Waseda University in Japan. And then uh, uh, I'm also very interested in the uh, architectural education. And then uh, I want to introduce the, um, the Hanna Parla. And, uh, uh, we will provide next Monday to broadcast the uh, live um, remote live from art studio. Thank you for coming today. And you have Thank you for the invitation. I have thoroughly enjoyed 
had the opportunity to guide your student Pinolti last year in the Albert House and next time in the studio as it fall. So everybody, some of you I've met already. My name is Hanna Pärnä and I'm in charge of the guided architectural course in the Albert House and the studio of Albert. Hope we'll meet again there. Tashi has visited the Albert House and the studio Albert with me several times and I think one of you already remarked that one never knows uh, the role or the position one actually has when one is talking with Taishi. Maybe Taishi is actually the guide and I'm the guest when you walk around the, the buildings designed by Alba. Thank you for the invitation. The exhibition is overwhelming. Thank you so much. And uh, actually, I was told we can use uh, this video until 7 o'clock, so that it's more 40 minutes remain. And then uh, I want to ask you, never make food loss. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, please take uh, this cattle, uh, and for the, this exhibition. And then uh, this is uh, one pamphlet to introduce the uh, crossover products I named uh, as a product design series. Uh, I began from uh, coming back to Japan after my sabbatical. And then uh, this is the concept to design the uh, ambiguous object, uh, which is not have only one unique functions. That's why the, I try to uh, design the quite uh, ambiguous shape the, to let the users to imagine how to use that one. So that this is uh, for me <laughs> uh, like a Nietzsche. Uh, this is Zarathustra, uh, <laughs> the half human, half monkey, and then he is uh, thinking how to do this object. This is a concept, and then <clears throat> I believe there's no uh, meaning for the scale for the design. <laughs> so that's why this kind of the series of the my design after the I try to make because of the exhibition I planned was have to be the postponed one year. That's why the, it's enough for time for me to make the, this kind of the project after learning from Finlandia. So <laughs> this is uh, uh, my vision. The first spot should be like this. <laughs> of course, I know very political things or the economical things. But uh, the, we still need visions. I believe so. <clears throat> the, in my uh, country, the, in 1960s, the architects can be strong enough strong to show the vision to the citizens. But nowadays, I'm not sure. <clears throat> the, maybe. <laughs> but uh, the, of course, <laughs> the uh, age is already transformed. So the methodology or the fund role of the architect should be changed. So that I say, unity architecture, we don't need any more monumental one. That we also show much more democratic uh, connection, even if we are different human race or different religions, different class, and so on. <coughs> so thank you so much again uh, for coming today. Thank you very much. So never make food loss. <laughs> Three cross and then uh, paper loss too. Twin tape. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.